Let's say that we're looking to borrow $50, so we can say that our principal is $50. We're going to borrow it for three years, so our time, let's say t in years, is three. And let's say we're not going to just compound per year. We're going to compound, we're going to compound four times a year, or every three months. And let's say that our interest rate, let's say that our interest rate, if we were to, if we were to, if if we were only compound once per year, it would be 10%. But since we're going to compound four times a year, we're going to see in an expression, we're going to divide this by four to see how much we compound each period. So 10% is the same thing as 0.10. So let's write an expression. I encourage you actually to pause this video and try to write an expression for the amount of the amount that you would have to pay back if you were to if you were to do this. If you were to borrow fifty dollars over three years, compounding four times a year, each period you would be compounding ten percent divided by four percent. How much would you have to pay back in three years? Let's write it out. Fifty dollars. That's your principal, and you're going to multiply that. You're going to multiply that, so you're going to. I guess so you could compound it. Each time, each period, each of these three times four periods. You have three years. Each of them have each of them divided into four sections. So you're going to have twelve periods. So each of them, you're going to compound by one plus your this r. So I'll write that as a decimal. Zero point one zero divided by the number of times you're compounding per year to the to the well, you'd be raising it to the nth power if this was only over a year. So you, there's four periods, and you'd raise it to the fourth power if it was only a year. But this is three years, so you're going to be doing this three times four. Three, you're going to do. You're going to. You're going to have four periods three times. So let me write this. So it's going to be four, four. four actually, let me write instead of n right over here. Let me write the four. So you see all the numbers. So you're going to do this four times three to the four times three power. And we could even, you could, well, I encourage you if you want, you could pause the video and you can use your calculator to actually calculate what that is. But the whole point of this is just to use real numbers to see why this actually makes sense. This is your principal. Each time you're going to be multiplying that times 1.025, 1 or you're going to be compound, you're going to be, you're going to be uh, growing it by 2.5%, and you're going to do this 12 times because there's, uh, there's 12 periods, four periods per year times three years. So this is going to be how much you have to pay back. So if we wanted to write this in a little bit more abstract terms, we could write this as p times 1 plus, and I'll do a close parenthesis since it's the same color, r over, over n to the n times t, n times t power. And so you could pick your p, your t's, your n's, your and your r, and you could put it here, and that's essentially how much you're going to have to pay back. Now, an interesting thing, and you saw that we had this up here from a previous video where we took the limit as n approaches infinity. Well, let's do the same thing here. Let's think about what that would mean. If we took the limit as n approaches infinity, if we took the limit of this as n approaches infinity, what are we, what is, what is this conceptually? Well, we're dividing our we're dividing our year into into more and more and more chunks, an infinite number of chunks. So you could really say, well, this would be the case where we're doing continuous compound interest, which is a fascinating concept to me. You are just you're dividing you're dividing your time period in an infinite number of chunks, and then and then compounding just an infinitely small extra amount every one of those periods. But you can actually come up with an expression for that. And as we see, that this actually doesn't just go unbounded and give us crazy things, that we can actually use this to come up with a formula for continuously compounding interest, which is used heavily in finance and, and, well, and banking, and, and, and as you can imagine, a, a bunch of things, and actually things, many, many things outside of finance and banking, exponential growth, et cetera, et cetera. So let's see if we can actually try to evaluate this thing right over here. Well, the one thing I am going to do to simplify this is to do a substitution. So I'm going to define a variable. I'm going to define, and the whole goal is so I can get it into a form that looks something like this. I'm going to define a variable x, x. And I'm going to say that x is the reciprocal of r over n, so that I can get a 1 over x right over here. So I'll write that as n over r. x is equal to n over n over r, or we could write this as n, n is equal to x times r, n is equal to x 
times x times r. And if we make that substitution, the limit as n approaches infinity, well, if we take the limit as x approaches infinity, then n is going to go to infinity as well. Or if n goes to infinity, then x is going to go to infinity as well. r right over here is just a constant term. We're just assuming that that's a given, that n is what we're really, we're really seeing what happens as we change it. So we could rewrite this thing right over here. And I'm doing it, I'm not being as super rigorous, but it's really to give you an intuition for where the formula we're about to see comes from. Let's rewrite this as the limit as x approaches infinity. The limit as x approaches infinity. And the limit of, of some constant times some expression, well, we could take the constant out. So we could say that's going to be p times the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 plus, well, r over n is 1 over x. 1 plus 1 over x, 1 over x to the to the, well, n is x times r. n is x times r, so let me write that, to the x times r, r times t power, t power. Well, the, all of this business is the exact same thing, so let me rewrite this. Let me, let me copy and paste this part right over here. So copy, this is the same thing. This is equal to p times, let me put some parentheses here, times, maybe that's too big, times the limit. So this limit right over here. So if I raise something to the product of these, these I'm taking x times r times t, well, that's the same thing as doing this whole thing to the x and then raising that to the rt power. rt power. This comes from, this comes from exponent properties that you might have learned before. These two things are equivalent. I'm, and I'm doing a couple of steps in the process here, but hopefully this, makes, this seems really reasonably intuitive, intuitive for you. I'm really just using the property that the limit, the limit as, let's say, x approaches c of f of x of f of x to the, let's call it, to the x r, x r t power. This is the same thing as, the limit as x approaches c of f of x to the x, and then all of that raised to the rt power. Well, what is this stuff right over here? What is all of this business that's inside the parentheses? Well, we've seen that before. All of this, all of that is equal to e. So we can write this, and this is exciting. This is, this is a formula for continuous compounding interest that if we continuously compound, we're going to have to pay back our principal times e, times e to the rt power. To the rt, rt power. So let's do a concrete example here. If you were to borrow, if you were to borrow $50 over three years, 10% interest, but you're not, you're not compounding just four times a year. You're going to compound an infinite times per year. You're going to be continuous compounding. So we can see how much you would actually have to pay back. It is going to be, it is going to be 50 times e to the, our rate is 0.1. So let me put some parentheses here, 0 0.1 times time, so times three years. T is in years. We assumed it was in years. And we get, you would have to pay back $67, and if we were to round, $67.49 if you were to round.